and Storm Team 4 are working for you. Exclusive Oprah on Bill Maher's use of the N-word. Welcome to Access Hollywood, the weekend edition. I'm Liz Hernandez. Maher's offensive joke cuts deep with Oprah, who I spoke with along with her queen sugar creator, Ava DuVernay. I believe that it should not be a part of the language right. and the lexicon. You know, I have this wonderful um, coffee table book um, that sits in my living room. It's called Freedom. And one of the pages in there that sears my brain, it's a lynching, and it's a lynching of a family. And then there's a whole mob of people who've come out to watch, and they're watching it like it's sport. And I always think about that family, and I actually had this conversation with Jay-Z. Uh, when he was saying, we can take the power back, we can take the power out of the word, we're changing the power, I go, you will never change it for that family. Right. You will never change it for the people for whom it was the last word they heard mm. when they were hung or they were dismembered or they were, you know, degraded. So I now know it's an argument I'm not going to win. I'm not going to win it, not in my lifetime, and that's okay. We'd love to have you work in the fields with us. <laughs> Work in the field. That's part of that. That's <laughs> Senate. I'm a house. <laughs> no, it's it's a joke. It may have been a joke on real time, but no one is laughing. Here's the backstory. While talking with Nebraska Republican Senator Ben Sass on his show, Mar dropped the N word. It ignited a firestorm of controversy. Social media exploding. <laughs> Common, who was honored at the 16th annual Chrysalis Butterfly Ball, said Mars' use of the racial slur is not okay. It's inappropriate for, you know, for someone to use that, um, a, a white person to say that on, on television. It's just, in, or in person or anywhere. It just, it, it doesn't feel right. You gotta know that that's not the right way to communicate and that, ain't, you know, it's not acceptable. It's just not. Bill Maher did apologize, saying he regretted his use of the offensive word. HBO called his comments completely inexcusable and tasteless. And Nina Parker joins me now. All right, so the hashtag fire Bill Maher is now going viral. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Should he be fired? What are the consequences that he should face? You know, I think this is a little bit different than the Kathy Griffin situation because she works for a news organization. He works for HBO, you know, that's more cable. It's a little bit loose. And we know what we're getting in to when we deal with Bill Maher. We know he's a little bit edgy. This was way over the line. It makes me feel like he uses this word because it flew out of his mouth so mm -hmm. effortlessly. But I think, you know, I don't know if, it, if firing him is the right choice. Mm. Oftentimes we punish people by get, taking something away. I think what would be more productive is if he did a special where he had a round table of people, of, of people who could educate him. We're not calling him out and saying he, he's a racist because no, that's not, I, you know, I mean. I don't think Bill Maher is racist. I do think that he is insensitive and I do think he is way too comfortable. Bill Maher returned to his show Friday. Okay, now on to the Clooney twins. George's dad couldn't be more excited. He phoned into Cincinnati TV station WXIX and revealed he had seen the babies two hours after they were born via Skype. Take a listen. How's everybody doing? Really well, and uh, they, you know, Amal, who is Superwoman, she is just amazing, and she was telling she she was guiding the narration. This is. Uh, what, two hours after the babies were born, and she was in charge of the conversation. She was just great. The, the babies are beautiful. Of course, she's beautiful, just as I, George, married up. I did, and so did he. She has just been telling us last week that she was big as a house. Of course, for, for her, that's a very small house. So yes, exactly. That. But she's great. Uh, George, was uh, his eyes were glazed, so I'm not sure he was sober. We'll figure that out. <laughs> that, now, now that's a joke. That part's a joke. That's okay. a joke, I know. <laughs> well, what do babies look like? They are gorgeous. They are Epps. Uh, Nina swears they have uh, George's nose. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, uh, Nina's yelling at me. She says, not both of them, one of them. The little boy looked like he had his nose, a little profile. Aww. So that sounds like a grandmother to me. Well, little Alexander is already off to a good start. All right, now to Scott in New York with Ariana Grande's return to Manchester. Scott? Liz, over 50,000 people poured into the Old Trafford Cricket Ground in Manchester for an emotional evening headlined by Ariana. Tim Vincent was there. With all the details behind the tribute concert, Ariana named One Love Manchester. <laughs>
Ariana and the crowd chime in for a powerful yet poignant one last time. That song was Ariana's encore the day of the Manchester concert terror attack and has been re-released to raise money for the 22 victims and their families. Why was it important to be here today? Um, we just wanted to all come together and show our support. We were at um, the arena two weeks ago and we just thought it would be good to come here and show that we're not scared. Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, Miley Cyrus, Coldplay and of course Ariana Grande could all sell out a concert on their own name alone. But today it's not about ticket sales. The 50,000 crowd behind me have all come together to show love, unity and defiance. In one of the more touching moments, Ariana comforted a 12-year-old girl who was part of the Parswood High School Choir. Two students from that school survived the May 22nd attack. Justin Bieber was overwhelmed with emotion while on stage. God is in the midst, no matter what's happening in the world. God while Bieber addressed the crowd, cameras captured a Manchester police officer happily dancing with a group of children. The benefit concert was a mix of tears and tight security, with hundreds of armed officers patrolling Old Trafford Stadium. Tonight has actually shown, I think, everyone in Manchester and everyone else around the world how strong we are and how well we... With the wrong yeah, place. they mess with the wrong place, really. Tonight is Ariana did two songs with her boyfriend of four years, Mac Miller, and engagement rumors started to fly when fans noticed the giant sparkler on her ring finger. But got to put that rumor to rest, Ariana has worn that ring many times before. Katy Perry had a unique way to honor the 22 victims of the Manchester terror attack. She wore a dress with their photos in the shape of a heart on her back and also on her neck and cuffs. The three-hour tribute went off flawlessly and a very grateful and emotional Ariana closed the show with her moving rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And within the first 24 hours, over $12 million was raised. And obviously, that number is still climbing. All right, next up, my globe trotting adventures. First, I'm in London with Tom Cruise and why he's ready to bring Top Gun back. Then I head to Rome with Bella Hadid. Is there a runway rivalry with her sister, Gigi? Find out next. Hi, I'm Toffee Faye, and I'm irresistible on so many levels. From my chewy caramel and roasted hazelnut to my creamy filling and drop of chocolate. Wow, what are you waiting for? Toffee Faye. Washed out. Sometimes. Washed out. Never. New Age Perfect Rosy Tone Moisturizer from L'Oreal. Created to flatter your skin tone. Flattery will get you everywhere. With LHA and Imperial Peony Extract. Science, it's a wonderful thing. Increases cell renewal, boosts skin's rosy tone instantly. New Age Perfect Rosy Tone by L'Oreal Skin Expert, Paris. We've still got it, and we're still worth it. More doing chores for mom, parole? More doing chores for dad, parole. More earning something you love, parole. Bounty is more absorbent, so the role can last 50% longer than the leading ordinary brand. So you get more life, parole. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. And now try Bounty with new Despicable Me 3 prints in theaters June 30th. Mm. Oh. Mm -mm. With Advil, you'll ask, what twisted ankle? What muscle strain? Advil makes pain a distant memory. Nothing works faster, stronger, or longer. What pain, Advil? Not a plan.
plane ride I'd like to take, not even with Tom Cruise. But he does reinvent the Mummy franchise in a fun, action-packed movie, I Was in London with Tom, who not only talked about bringing the Mummy back, but also about finally getting to work on the sequel for Top Gun. Is this a, the uh, former guns coming back with a, with a Man, new crop you of... You just gotta see it. I don't, can't talk about it. You just gotta see it. Give it me really something. is. You gotta, what okay, are you... there's going to be okay. aircraft carriers. Yes. There's gonna be jets. Drones? There's gonna be jets. Drones? There's gonna be jets. <laughs> <laughs> Aviators are back, you know? The need for speed, we're gonna have big, fast machines, and it's gonna be a competition film, uh, like the first one. And it's not gonna be called Top Gun 2, it's called Top Gun Maverick. So, I didn't want a number, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, You don't want a number. No, I agree. You, know, you don't need a number. Top Gun Maverick will begin shooting within a year, and it's another reminder for Tom that he has the best job on the planet. I remember doing taps when I was 18 years old and thinking if I could do this the rest of my life, I will, I will never take it for granted and I will be very grateful, mm. uh, you know, and because it's what I've wanted to do my whole life since yeah. I was four. I saw her. She is real. And now Tom is bringing a childhood love back to the big screen with The Mummy, in which he has unearthed a whole new franchise. I, look, I love monster movies ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw the original Universal Pictures and, you know, on, in black and white on television, you know, when I was, when I was little. And to have the opportunity to, to be part of this dark universe and to help create it, I could not pass this opportunity up. And later, what Tom told me about Zac Efron wanting to be in the next Top Gun. But now, to my exclusive interview with Bella Hadid. I accompanied the supermodel to Rome, where I discovered that looking glamorous and being exquisitely dressed is just a typical day for the fashion world's rising young star. Every single job that I get, I'm still shocked, and I never take it for granted, and I always just feel like, you know, we all work our butts off. She's clearly the Bella of the ball, and I was with the 20-year-old in Rome where she strutted solo down the iconic Spanish steps for Bulgari. In just two short years, the baby sister of supermodel Gigi Hadid has come into her own on the catwalk, yet none of the fame and $12 million fortune has seemed to go to her head. Women's Wear Daily said you were the runway model of 2017. I mean, you were, that's a huge <laughs> thing. Do you care, though, about the, the accolades? Is it just about the work to you? Is it just about landing the game? Well, things like that, it's its crazy. I would never say, you know, it's my year. There's so many incredible models and so many hardworking people that, you know, we all put an effort to make this a great year. One of Bella's biggest moments was getting her wings, walking in her first Victoria's Secret fashion show with Gigi in Paris. I love it. Oh, Wasn't I she love amazing? It. Uh, you both. You yeah. killed it. I already, I saw, I already took her a picture. I was like, Gigi, you killed it. And she was like, that was... Two hours ago. You, 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 you. Yeah. you're the one. The sisters were thrilled because their proud parents, developer Muhammad Hadid and former Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Yolanda Hadid, who is battling Lyme disease, were both there. Victoria's Secret, this was a major moment, not just for you, not just for your sister, but for your mom too, right? This was incredible because, you know, my sis we've always wanted to do VS, we've always wanted to do VS together, right. and, um, for my mom to be there and my dad to be there was incredible, but my mom, you know, she's been sick for a really long time. I think this was one of the first times that she actually came to something in a long time. So we were really happy. You and Gigi, you're in the same industry. Yes. Do you ever go up for the same gigs? Is there some sort of kind of friendly competition there? The thing about Gigi and I, and what my mom also said to us when we first started working was, you know, this is your job and it's not about you as sisters. We do a lot of things together, but also our looks are completely different. Couldn't be more different. Yeah, so I, I, you know, at the end of the day, I have to be like, maybe they didn't want a brown haired girl with blue eyes. They wanted, you know, a blondie, you know, with tan and features, and Gigi's so beautiful, so if she ever gets a job that I don't get, I'm like, you know, take it. Bella is keeping busy as the new ambassador for Bulgari's fall campaign and launching its new fragrance, Goldea, the Roman Knight. You are the face of the new Bulgari fragrance. How does this feel right I'm now? I'm holding the gold.